The Balls and the Newmans are two of the most famous basketball families. So how did they get to where they are today? So what's good y'all? It's my LBG. The LBG stands for Let's Be Great. And we are back with another story video. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Leave a like for more. And without further ado, let's get into the video, man. LeVar Ball and Jamie Newman are two of the most iconic basketball fathers there are. Mr. Ball and Mr. Newman are kind of similar. They draw a lot of attention to their family. Now, whether that's good or bad, that's up to y'all to decide. But one thing you have to admit is that they do draw a lot of attention and they get a lot of publicity. Maybe sometimes it's too much, but hey, they still get it. And one thing about these guys, they think their kids are the absolute best. So let's start with LeVar Ball's family and let's throw it all the way back to where things started. It all started around Lonzo Ball's senior year in high school. If you clicked on this video, I assume you know who is all in the Ball family, but if not, let's do a brief recap. Of course, you got LeVar Ball. Then you got Lonzo Ball, who plays for the Pelicans currently. You got Leandro Ball, who stole from China. And then you got LaMelo Ball, probably the most famous one. At the time, when Lonzo was a senior, his younger brother Leandro Ball was a junior, and then LaMelo was a freshman. And when Lonzo was a senior, the whole family didn't really draw a lot of attention then. But things change very fast. At the time, all three of the sons committed to play at UCLA. And oddly enough, things were looking normal for this family. It looked like all three kids were going to graduate from Chino Hills and play at UCLA and maybe go to the NBA one day. But of course, LeVar Ball had other plans. In Lonzo's first year at UCLA, he actually balled out. And maybe that was a bad thing because it started getting to not Lonzo's head, but LeVar's head. LeVar Ball was going all over social media and ESPN saying Lonzo is the best player, blah, 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 blah. He's going number one overall. He should go number one. If he doesn't go number one, he should go to the Lakers then. And he was saying that at the beginning of the year. And how ironic it is that actually the Lakers wound up having the number two overall pick and they pick Lonzo Ball. I don't think it was a bad pick at all, and I don't even think you could consider it a bust. But when Lonzo did get to the NBA, that's when LeVar started taking things way out of control. As soon as he got in the NBA, he started saying Lonzo was the best player in the NBA. And that's not only gonna make ESPN people mad, but that made other players in the NBA mad. It got to the point where other players were even talking trash to Lonzo on Twitter because of what his dad was saying. And for Lonzo, he's just sitting there quiet. He really doesn't even say much. LeVar Ball was even going on ESPN and saying Lonzo was gonna win MVP. And not only that, he said that the Lakers are gonna draft all three of his sons. And as y'all know, that did not happen. With that being said, let's go back to Leangelo. Now for Leangelo, his story isn't all that much. It's quite simple. He graduated from Chino Hills, had a pretty great year there. Then he went to UCLA and that's where things started to go downhill very fast. Now by downhill, I mean very downhill because it was like the roller coaster fell off the track. As soon as Leandro got to UCLA, he only got to play in a couple games before he went to China and stole some stuff and basically left the university after that. And that's all you got to say about his story because there's not much after that. We really haven't heard much from him since. And quite frankly, I don't think he would have got drafted even if he didn't steal stuff from China because he really don't have a good body type for the NBA. But I do think if he would have stayed in college, he could have had a pretty successful career. But hey, we'll never know. And now for probably the most famous ball brother there is, LaMelo Ball. He has a completely different attitude from Lonzo Ball. He definitely thinks he is the best and he's not scared to say it. He's even gone on record to say that, yeah, I'm better than Lonzo. I'm the best ball brother there is. And as a freshman, he balled out for Chino Hills. And that's pretty impressive because he's really young. But after a couple years, he wound up leaving Chino Hills because of his dad, LeVar. Something between the coaching staff didn't go the way that LeVar liked it, and as soon as things didn't go the way that LeVar liked it, he took him out of Chino Hills. When he took him out of Chino Hills, he enrolled him in Spire Academy, and quite frankly, that was probably one of the best moves he did. Now before we go on, he also put Leandro Ball and LaMelo Ball in overseas play, but there wasn't really that much came out of it. I mean, Leandro played pretty good and LaMelo played great. It doesn't matter where you put LaMelo, he's gonna ball out. All right, back to the story. The whole overseas thing was completely a joke. I mean, he just put him over there because he wanted to do his own thing. But putting LaMelo Ball in Spire Academy, it was actually a pretty decent move by LeVar. And like I said, I don't think it matters where you put LaMelo Ball, he's gonna ball out anywhere. Whether it's overseas, Spire Academy, or any high school, in America, he's flat out gonna hoop. With that being said, LaMelo Ball is currently playing overseas again before he can get drafted in the NBA. And let me just tell y'all, this dude is looking like the number one overall pick 
and he's probably the best ball brother. But I'm not here to tell you the whole success and whole story of LaMelo Ball because there's plenty of other videos about this, and this video would be way too long. The only thing y'all really need to know is that LaMelo Ball is balling out overseas, and he's definitely going to be a top 10 pick. Now, I wouldn't even be surprised if he's a top 3 pick or even goes number 1 overall because a lot of people have said he might. There's been a couple scouts say that they would pick him number 1, but there is one red flag, and it has nothing to do with LaMelo himself. It's his father, LaVar Ball. See, these NBA teams, they don't want the drama that Lonzo Ball had at the Lakers. And wherever LaMelo goes, you know there's going to be LaVar Ball and drama. So with that being said, let's go to the other family with a lot of drama, and that is the Newmans. Now the Newmans, their story is a little different than the Ball family story, but it's got a lot of similarities. The one thing that is very similar is their father, Jamie Newman. He is almost exactly like LeVar Ball. He stirs up drama and he thinks his kids are the absolute best. Most people have heard of the young phenom, Julian Newman, but if not, don't worry, I got you. Julian Newman started out playing varsity basketball as only a fifth grader. Now think about that. He was playing against grown men as just a fifth grader. Now, a lot of that had to do with his father he was the coach but he was somewhat holding his own out there and at the time he had a lot and I mean a lot of hype around his name but one thing that has always hurt Julian Newman is that he's pretty small but one thing that is great about Julian Newman is that he can shoot the ball and he can handle the ball at a high level and for his story in high school there's really not much to say besides that he's balled out almost every year now he does have a lot of haters but he does average around 30 points per game almost every single year so it is what it is. Now for Julian, I don't know if it's exactly his height, attitude, or what it may be, but he hasn't really received any interest from colleges. However though, he did get his first Division One offer from UTSA. So hey, at least he's gotten one Division One offer. That's pretty good. I think a lot of colleges are scared to go after this guy because of, yes, the obvious is height, but also on the defensive end, it'd be a problem. But hey, I'm not here to talk down on the kid. I'm just telling y'all what it is. One thing about Julian Newman though that is very obvious is he has an attitude problem. He isn't like Leandro Ball, LaMelo Ball, or Lonzo Ball. One thing I will say about the Ball family that I really like, all three of the brothers, they are very humble. Now don't get fun being confused with humble. I mean, they have fun on the court, like especially, you know, LaMelo. But, you know, besides that, they're really humble and they don't do much talking on the court. They let their game talk. Now, on the other hand, for Julian Newman, it's not the same. I'll probably throw up some clips here and y'all see it that this guy, he's very, very cocky on the court. I'm calling it cocky because I think it is cocky. I, I think it's just being, you know, way overconfident sometimes. But hey, y'all can be the judge of that. And hey, maybe that's drawing away the colleges. We don't know. But for his sister, Jade Newman, she's been playing varsity since she was eight years old. Now, I know with boys and girls, it's different because, you know, girls just don't have the physical attributes that guys have but that's still impressive. So her story is very similar to her brother. She's been playing varsity for a while now. Jaden Newman actually got her first Division One offer at the age of nine. I just want y'all to think about that. There's nine and 10 year olds out here that can't even do a left-handed or right-handed layup. And she got a Division One basketball offer at the age of nine. Now that offer was from the University of Miami, which is in Florida. And to this day, I'm not sure if it holds up or if it's still true, but if it is, that's crazy. She's currently a freshman, but she's been balling out her whole life. And I can almost assure y'all that she will get many, and I mean many more collegiate offers. But as of now, we'll just have to wait and see how she progresses. Now onto their father, Jamie Newman. This guy is a lot, and I mean a lot, like LeVar Ball. He talks very highly of his kids. Which, I'm not hating on the man at all. I'm not hating on the man. That is great. You should talk highly of your kids. But, you know, there may be a certain point when too much is you know, too much. Just recently, Mr. Newman actually opened up his own school, which is no other than Prodigy Prep. And that is currently where Julian Newman and Jaden Newman are playing. Now they just opened up, so I can't talk too much on it, if they'll be successful or not. I'm not gonna judge, you know, a school on its first year because obviously it's gonna take time to, you know, progress as a program and get new recruits in. But I do think that's cool of him and kind of crazy just to do. The school name is Prodigy Prep and he even has his own clothing brand called, you know, Prodigy. That's their clothing line and that's their lingo that they like to use. And we all know LeVar Ball is famous for the Triple Bs, you know, BBB, Big Baller brand. So, you know, both fathers, they started their own brand based off of their kids. It's almost like they're using their kids to, you know, live their high school hoop dreams and they're using their kids for fame. But hey, that's just kind of my opinion, so y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. 
Now, LeVar Ball did try to start his own basketball league, which was the JBA. Kind of like, you know, Jamie Newman did starting his own school, but the JBA wasn't too successful. But both of these fathers really have the same, you know, mindset in life. They're really trying to take advantage of opportunities based through their kids. I'm not faulting either father for what they're doing. I just think it's very similar and it's kind of funny. Big Baller brand though, as we know, it's kind of gone downhill since the start and everything with the bar ball is kind of, you know, put out there, it's also gone downhill. So with the Newmans starting their own school and, you know, the Prodigy brand, We'll have to see if it's gonna take the same path as Big Ball of Brand. I honestly have no clue how that school would turn out or how the Prodigy brand will turn out, but we would just have to see. I know this video was kinda long, but it was a lot of information just to cram in one video. I know I did leave out a lot of information, but honestly, if I would've put in every bit of information, this video would've been 30 minutes longer than what it actually is now. So if I did leave out a little bit of information or details here and there, or a fun fact that you thought I should've thrown in there, I probably didn't miss out on it. I just didn't want to make this video way too long and boring. I tried to cram everything in and keep the video at a respectable amount of time because no one wants to watch a 30 or 40 minute video. Like, come on. This video is already going to be long as it is. So if you watch to this point, I appreciate it and I hope you enjoy. But with all this being said, that's about going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. If you're new to my channel, what are you doing, man? Hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. One, four, three. Let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Yeah. Peace.